Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Learn Smart Coding. This is Karthik, thanks for joining with me today. And in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to set up the sign up sign in with a Google account using Azure Active Directory B2C. In the previous video, we saw how to configure those things and uh, in the portal and as well as in our web API and the uh, Angular application that we have. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this third party identity provider into the same authentication section so that you will start seeing that in your screen so user can log in with their gmail account come let's get started on my screen so this is the uh, you know the application that we created right so if you see my previous video we created uh, azure adb to see tenant and then we configured two applications one is the web api one is the angular spa application and which you can see that now in the github repository so what we are going to do is we are going to configure the identity provider. Let me go to this Azure ADB and I'm just showing you that I've logged in with my uh, learn smart coding at gmail.com and this my uh, the ADB to see account is learn smart coding dot on microsoft.com. Under the identity provider, you see this all these things are there for the Google. Uh, once you click, there are three things missing their name, which I can provide as essential products because that's the application that we are configuring and what to do with the client ID and secret. In order to get the client ID and secret, we need to do some configuration in the Google. So the first thing is you need to open up the console.google uh, cloud.google.com and log in with your Gmail account. I logged in with my Gmail account and it's a uh, brand new, it's fresh. Okay. So first thing first, right? So you need to first create a project. There's no project associated with this account right now. Uh, we need to create the project first. So under the left side, enable API and services in the top, you have a select a project. Then click on the new project. Provide the project name. Uh, give some name, meaningful name. I'm going to give essential product. Okay, so that's the project name. And click on create so that it creates a project. All right, the project has been created. Click on select project. Okay, so the project is selected. Uh, you can also go up and select the project. So let's pick up the project that we created, which is essential products. So project is loaded, all good. And what you can do is uh, you need to do a couple of steps now one by one. Okay. So the first thing that you have to do is so click on the hamburger menu and go to the API and services and under that click on the OAuth concern screen. So that's the first one that you need to click OAuth concern screen. Once you click that, it is going to load a different page and uh, let's wait for the page to load. All right, now there are two types, user types, internal and external. Okay, so this is something external. We, whatever we are dealing now is with the internal. It's nothing to do with Google. So click on uh, external and click create. All right, so now the screen came. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, you need to enter a couple of app information. The first one is the application information, the application name. So let's provide some meaningful name, essential space products. Okay, so that's the application. So I'm going to provide that as essential uh, space. Okay, there are two space, one space, essential products. Okay, and supported email, I'm going to choose my own email address. And then uh, you need to pick up the logo. See, logo is not mandatory, but I have my own logo. So I'm going to uh, pick up the logo next. Okay, so click on browse and I'm going to pick up the logo. Okay, so I picked up my logo and logo started appearing. And the other thing is the app domain. Okay, so app domain here, what you need to provide is the three links. Uh, as the name describes, we need to provide the link where the user will end up uh, going to the final page. Okay, so uh, in our case, we are setting up in local, so local host uh, 4200. Okay, so these things are self descriptive. You need to provide the uh, first one is the uh, URL where the, uh, you know, the user will land and then the second and third one is the policy link and the service link okay so for now i'm picking up my url from my own website and providing it in the policy link and the service link uh, user will start seeing those information and uh, for the application homepage, i've also pasted a link okay so all these things are ready now because i added two different domains it started complaining that these domains are not authorized okay so if you are going to paste your own domain name the same problem you will see but you just click on add domains and uh, add the uh, both the domains that i am uh, putting it here okay that's for my purpose and for you whatever domain you put it's your domain name okay so the first one is added the second one is the karthiktechblog.com okay so both the domains are added error went away now developer contact information again it's for uh, 
for 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 the contact information for the developer so i'm going to provide my own uh, email address for this so let's quickly enter learn smart coding at rate gmail.com okay i entered the domain name now click on save and continue it is getting saved OAuth concern screen is saved now okay so this part is done the next part is click on credentials once you click on credentials you need to uh, you know uh, you know enter few more information and generate the credentials okay so in the top if you see there is something called create credentials under the credentials right so click on that and click on OAuth client id so this page will bring up what application that you're using in our case it is web application so i'll choose the first one again give a name meaningful name here uh, essential product is the application name so i'm going to provide that here okay so whatever you provide here uh, is what you will see on the on the screen on the login screen okay i'll tell you what i meant so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to provide a name so i provided a name called uh, essential product and under the authorized javascript origins this is important okay so here you need to provide our b2c login credential see uh, which is our tenant name dot b2c login dot com only then the cross site scripting thing will work properly so in our case it is learn smart coding dot b2c login dot com in your case your active directory name will come and then dot b2c login dot com okay so this is added all good the next thing that we need to do is the authorized redirect urls okay so authorized redirect url is also important i'm going to copy paste uh, uh i'm going to copy paste a piece of uh, url and then i'll tell you what you need to modify okay so here we need to say our uh, learn smart coding dot b2c login dot com okay that's the uh, first one slash learn smart coding dot on microsoft dot com you see this the two dot com the first one is for the b2c login the second one is our active directory domain name okay which ends with dot on microsoft dot com followed by what two slash author app i'll give you this url in the description once you're done with this we got the client id and secret okay now we grab that put these two informations into this and then we can save we are done with the saving of this identity provider okay now as soon as you do this you see this google will disappear from this because you have already configured it right as a third party identity provider so that will disappear all good so now what we have to do is we have to go to this user flow and uh, try to run this user flow and if you run this right now see google is not coming we just configured it right but something else is missing so what is missing what else we have to do so let's go back and fix that problem okay so right now only the local uh, domain i would say local email setup has been granted google though i have configured it i haven't configured that google into my user flow that okay when someone is trying to log in give these two options for them uh, to select one of those right so that is what we have to do so let's go to the user flow and click on sign up sign in okay so sign up sign in under the identity provider right now the local uh, email account is alone is selected right so what we have to do is we have to give permission to the uh, third party identity provider which is google and we have to select that only then that will work so you see this we have only the local email address so you select the identity provider as google click on that google and uh, do a save and then try to run the user flow now if you try to run the user flow great see now the google sign in has started appearing in the down i can click on this and uh, sign in with the google account i don't need to log in with my local account i mean i am still i can log in but i'll be treated as two different person okay so this is the option now uh, actually if you add more identity provider the more things will start showing up here okay so sign in with your social account the first one we configured so that's what it will come you can change this name essential products google actually if you change this uh, you can actually uh, see a different name here now if you see i'm going to log in with my gmail account which is karthiktechblog.com at the rate gmail.com okay so once you do this there's going to be a consent screen that we accepted it and then it is going to present us um, you know couple of uh, claims right so this is the first thing that we came so because i'm trying to do uh, from the first it's giving me a verification code let's copy paste the verification code verify this we have verified i'm going to change my display name and continue 
now this user is validated and has been created in the azure storage okay in our uh, store so how do i know this okay so don't worry about all this uh, thing user flow now if you download your code and run you should be start seeing this gml thing so how do i uh, verify this so if i go to this uh, adb2c and go to the user section you see this the two users now with the same email address one is the locally created email address the first one which is stored under the microsoft the second one is the actual google gmail address which is validated by the google okay which is also stored here now you can see both the things are appearing up uh, so user have now ability to log in with any of those things that they want all right so where do you find the source code if you don't know from uh, if you have landed onto this video and you haven't seen my previous video it's okay you can go and check the complete flow how to develop this uh, before you add this identity uh, providers but here's the thing if you go to this url github.com slash learn smart coding and then you will see under the repository you have a lot of repositories right so the angular application is present here in this angular beginner course or the shopping app and then the next one the web api that we are talking about is present here which is essential uh, products api so if you download these two source code and if you uh, install the npm package and try to run this from your local you should be able to see this google identity provider coming up on your screen okay i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section and i'll see you in the next video for a different identity provider and different topic don't forget to subscribe my channel share this video with your friends if you like it and um, thank you thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel like it share it comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon